Hi guys, it's Pete from iDrewBunch.com and today we're going to start part three. We are going to 3D print the school ring that we created in the last two episodes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing and if you can, help my channel grow. Share as often as you can. I appreciate all the help you guys give me. Let's get started. Okay guys, so what we have done here is we finished part two where we've designed our ring and now it's time to get on to the next step. What I need to do is do two changes to the ring that I want to make sure are done properly. I want to smooth this out because if you notice when I zoom in here, we've got little uh, faces that are showing. And if I right click on the object, our ring, and I come down to smooth shade, it smooths it out. Now, for the most part, it gives us a nice pattern and I'm really happy with that. I don't see any errors in the pattern. It looks pretty good. I am going to... Uh, Right now, I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I am going to call this School Ring 2 Part E. And once that's saved, I can move on to the next step, which is to, uh, I'm going to apply a modifier to this. I'm going to come down here and hit the modifier, Add Modifiers, and I'm going to use the Edge Split. And that just kind of makes everything else just a little bit crisper and sharper. And that just makes our model look perfect, not just in the viewport, but when we export it, everything's applied. I just applied that modifier, obviously. So we have to export this. To export this now, I have to export it as an STL file so that I can bring it into my sheet two box slicer. This way we can slice it, or we can actually print it with the Elegoo Mars and the Epax X1. And don't forget my Epax X1 has the parallel lamp in there, although it, be, it would be a little bit less powerful than the uh, than the Elegoo Mars, it's supposed to print more evenly. So we're going to do this ring and two prints and test it. So let's do that now. Let's export this out with our ring selected. Come to File menu, down to Export, and we are going to export this as an STL. Uh, if you haven't got this option on your uh, menu here, then the quick way to check is go to the Edit menu, down to Preferences, it'll bring up your Preference menu. Under Add-ons, we want to look for STL. So in the little search box here, just click STL. And it's, it should be a, a selection here for Import Export STL. If there's no check mark in it, please put a check mark in there and then close that up. You can do Auto Save or you can use this little menu option and hit Save Preferences, close that up. Now with our ring selected, I can go in and export this as an STL. So I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'm going to save it as school ring to E STL. I'm going to come over to the right side here and I'm going to select selection only. We're going to keep this at a scale of one. Now my model is a little bit smaller, so we are going to have to make some changes to it. Um, let's export this now. That's done, we've exported it. Now it's time to open up our sheet two box slicer. Now. now that I've got the sheet two box slicer open, we're gonna go find that file, open it up, and remember it's on the desktop, so I will go to my desktop and then look for that school ring 2-E STL, and there it is. I'm gonna hit the open button, and that'll import it into our slicer. With that done, I'm just going to double check the size, and I did notice that my size is off a little bit, so I'm going to make that 28.5. That's about how high I wanted to make this. And that was just my modeling error. But here is our object ready to be sliced. The first thing we want to do is add in our supports. Now, when working with a castable object, we have to be very careful uh, where we put those supports. So I suggest doing one of two things. You can use the automatic settings and then go remove those at some point in time, or you can add in your own supports. And if you haven't figured out how to use your sheet two box slicer yet, I might go into a tutorial if you guys ask for it, but I think there's enough on YouTube now to get you through that. Here's our model. It looks good. Doesn't look like there's gonna be any failure points. And I am gonna select the supports option. For this ring, I'm gonna use medium supports. And just for now, I'm going to select all and let it put the raft and the supports in place. It'll take about 30 seconds or so.
Okay, as you can see, we've got our supports in place, and now what I want to do is remove supports that are going to be problematic with the printing. So if, uh, if you do a lot of printing, that you'll, you'll notice that sometimes supports get added to places where you don't necessarily want them. For instance, right here, while this may be a problem in print, it really isn't going to be, I can tell by just the way it looks, and I need to remove these supports here because what's going to happen is those tips are going to interfere with the design of our ring. So I will select the minus option right here, delete support. I will click on the support I want to delete and then hit the delete key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to remove those three for now. We're going to come over to the other side where the palm tree is and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I've got those out of the way. Now what I want to do is find any supports that kind of touch the sides of the ring or the brim of the finger hole, like right here. The support here is going to interfere with the, the rim of the finger hole, so I'm going to get rid of that support right there. It looks like I've got one more support here that's kind of printing along the corner edge. We'll get rid of that. This one also is giving me a problem. I don't want anything on the sides and I can go back and modify those later. I can add supports, which we will do right now. I don't see anything else that's gonna be much of an issue. I'm gonna kinda of look at this from the bottom and kinda of zoom into the middle here. And just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna add in a few more supports here, just to cover myself. And I think I want to just put one on the inside on that part of the ring and right here on this part of the ring. And believe it or not, that is gonna be all we need for supports to print out our school ring. Now I'm gonna use exactly the same settings for both the Elegumars and the Epax X1 printers. Uh, the only difference between the two printers that I have, I've upgraded my Epax to a parallel lamp and my opinion on that is coming soon. I just want to get these prints started now. So let's go over to our slicer settings and let's pull up the settings. Right here I've got the Elegoo Mars and again this is going to be both exactly the same for both the Elegoo and the Epax. Uh, with the castable resin selected, my machine selected, I'm going to look at the resin type. I've got castable resin under print settings. I am doing print layer height of 0.04. I'm going to do a bottom layer count of five. My bottom exposure time for this wax resin, this is the frozen resin, is going to be 80 seconds per five layers. I am going to do 27 seconds of exposure time per normal layer and those will be uh, at again 0 0.04 millimeters. These settings here are somewhat standard. I'm going to leave those the same. As far as infill, of course, we're not going to have any infill, which means it'll be solid. And under advanced, I'm using anti-aliasing of two. Now, sometimes with wax resins, this can be problematic, but we're going to try it and see how it does. With that done, we will close that up and hit the slice button. So now I've got my slicer here and we can see if there's going to be any other issues with this and it looks pretty good. I'm just going to scroll down to see if I see any red marks that are potential problems. And again, very, very small minor ones are not an issue when you're printing in resin with UV light. Um, it could be an issue if you had a large overhang. I don't see any overhangs here and my model checked out pretty good. So that being said and done, it's time to go save this. I'm going to save this to my desktop and then I'll copy it over to the uh, memory stick for both printers. That's saved and now we can go off and start our test prints. And the first thing I need to explain is that I'm using the green frozen castable wax resin. This is a really good castable resin. It burns out pretty well. And if you follow the instructions on their website, you can get really good results. As far as the print settings, don't go by what's on the bottle. Those settings were made for a specific printer, the frozen printer, and uh, they need to be extended for any of these small desktop SLA printers. The first set of prints that I did, or the first print I did of our school ring in part three, this, this is on the Epax X1 with the parallel light upgrade. I uh, 
have a little problem with my printer. My print bed was out of alignment, so it came out a little bit poorly, but you can see from the results, most of my prints work very well. Um, some of the uh, test pieces I did for class rings uh, that I'm adding to the Blender Gems library came out really well. For the most part, I think, uh, other than my lighting here, you can see the detail in the print. I did print this at an anti-aliasing rate of two, and typically when I do a casting, I kind of set that to zero because I want more detail in the print. And anti-aliasing kind of blends the resin into the model. The uh, resulting effect of having my print bed a little bit off kilter, one of the screws, actually two of the screws were a little bit loose, and that's my fault. I haven't set the, uh, the build plate up in about a month and a half. Uh, resulted in, I would say, a less than desirable print. But for the most part, the detail is there and it will be usable. I'm not uh, unimpressed with it. And the casting or the, the wax resin really works well with the EPAX. So my second attempt was to print it on the Elegoo Mars. So I, I set up the Elegoo Mars with the exact same settings as you saw previously. And I set it to print. It took, uh, on both printers, it took about eight hours to print this particular model. That worked out well. There is quite a bit of detail on this ring that didn't show up with my unleveled bed on the Epax X1. This is kind of how I determined my bed was really out of level. I checked it after I printed it on the Elegoo Mars, and boy, there was a big difference. As you can see from the photos, these prints came out relatively good. And although I'm not gonna cast this piece, this piece itself is very clean, very clear. I did not cure this particular ring. I did cure the model that I printed on the Epax. I did not cure this one because I just didn't have time and it looked really well. And I wanted to get these out to you. Again, if we look at the detail on both prints, they did come out good. I'm very happy with the way this resin prints. I will be doing a full review of the resin itself and, and all the models that I've printed with it so that you can see my settings and how that I, I set them up and what, uh, what settings you should use when you do not just the printing, but the burnout after you've uh, put this in the molding compound. So I know there's a lot of diehard EPAX users as well as Elegoo Mars users, and I do love my Mars printer. I think it's one of the greatest printers I've ever used. Um, as far as like industrial strength, neither of the, any of these desktop printers are not like full-blown industrial strength. They don't have the high wattage lamps that the more industrial printers do, but you can get the settings to print correctly on your desktop printers. And that is always a good thing. Like here you can see the three tests I did for my upcoming library add-on. So here's a comparison, the EPAX and the Elegoo Mars, and you can see the difference in both of these. So guys, I'll close with this. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you can, share it with all your friends because sharing makes my channel grow and I appreciate it. Have a great day, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this series.